Pablo Picasso once stated, We all know that art is not truth. Art is a lie that makes us realise truth. From painting and poetry to symphonies and sculpture, the arts bring beauty and illumination to some, confusion and frustration to others. But what is art? The idea of a work of art, created by an artist, did not truly exist before the Renaissance. And what value do the arts still have? Do they still make us realise the truth, or are they increasingly rarefied and obsolete in this digital, disposable age? With me to discuss the wide spectrum of the arts are Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick and award-winning writer. Thank you so much for having me. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no qualifications, very little education, but who is now known the world over as a man with a head like a fucking orange. Um All right. <laughs> Well, I suppose if I can pick up on something from your introduction, Ricky, mm. um, you you pose the question in a sense: what is art? Um, it's a very broad term. It's a very difficult one as well. Um, I think the earliest people to ponder it were the were the Greeks, and I think they thought that art was and its point was to try and emulate as close as possible the beauty of nature. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So they knew art was a sort of, you know, a quest for beauty, and uh, I suppose they thought nature was pretty perfect in its a aesthetic. And so the point of uh, an artist was to try and tap into that. Um, well, let me throw that question over to uh, Carl Pilkington. Uh, what, what do you want to know? Well, we were just trying to uh, clarify what art is. Ricky's just referring back to the Greeks. Uh, it's just something for your eyes to look at. Right, it's, right. it's just a change from the norm, isn't it? Um, mm. I mean, that's why I think most people have it. But then, the problem is, I'd, I'd never buy a piece of art. I don't see the point in buying something, because I know that my eyes will get bored of it eventually. Right. So it's better to keep it in a museum, like a lot of places, you know, a lot of museums keep the stuff, they rotate it, because people get sick of looking at it. They shift the art around, don't they? People go, I'm sick of that now. They move it around the world, let someone else's eyes look at it. Well, uh, that, that's more to get everyone the chance to see it, as opposed to the people who looked at it once and are now sick of oh, it. Oh, not the shitting Mona Lisa again. No, if but I have to how stare many times can you look bitch. at the same thing? I think there's a snobbery with art. I think people do go, well, well, have I you seen the new, uh, the new one at the Louvre? Oh, well, yeah, I think there lovely. should be a snobbery with art. Why? Because the world is full of idiots. And just because the, uh, there's not safety in numbers with art. I think you should be a complete fascist when you're creating a work of art. I don't, I don't think it is open to, uh, utilitarian or democratic, um, uh, referendum. I you end up with the X Factor winner that way. No, no, but that, that pleases the masses, that's what I'm saying. When, uh, there, there was a painting knocking about when I was a kid, right, called the Blue Boy. Yeah. Now every house had one. Right? It well, turned out that it was just a bloke who had a load and he was flogging them to everyone. <laughs> but the thing is, that sums up art to me. Someone's got a load, do you want one? Go on then, I've got a wall to fill. And they stick it on. It's not, now oh, what does that represent? Well- What's that gonna bring to the room? It's just filling a- filling a gap. And that's what art is to me, is filling a gap that would otherwise have now in it. But you're obsessed with the functionality of things. This is all you're ever obsessed with. There's, what's its function? You all, things always need to have a- need to get you from A to Z in some way. And art's not about that. Have you got much art in your house? Yes. Really? Because it gives me pleasure and it don't, I don't get tired of it, I don't get bored of it. Do you look it. at it every day? Well, it's there, isn't it? It just adds Yeah, but other things are there. Dust is there, but- Surprisingly, I've not compared <laughs> I think art I've, I've to dust as often as I perhaps should. <laughs> but- um, the thing about, uh, and this I think may be intriguing to you, uh, Damien Hirst, of course, is more of a conceptual artist like Tracy Emin, and a lot of what contemporary art does is followed on from a guy called Marcel Duchamp, who I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh. Now, he famously, <laughs> he famously took a gentleman's white urinal like you'd find in a pub toilet, and he put it on its side, and he signed it with a fake name, and he put it in an art gallery. Now, he did that in about 1917, perhaps a bit later. It, I, it just annoys me, because there'll be snobby people who haven't got a clue, and they're looking at that and they go, oh yeah, I see what he's trying to say. Well, that might make them think, they might- Damien Hirst, I don't- I, I don't feel angry with Damien Hirst, really, because right. he's getting away with it. But why does that annoy you? Because it's people falling into the trap. Damien Hirst, before he dies, I bet he goes, what a laugh that was. 
they had everyone on. There's a very good point as well because some people think that the greatest art form of uh, the last hundred years is marketing. Yeah. Some people say that that is his art, that it's not good enough to do it. You've got to then get away with it. And if art, if the point of art is to inflame, I don't think anything inflames people more than the discussion about whether something's art or if someone's taking the piss or if someone gets 50 million for something, do they deserve it? Is it worth a hospital? Well, what do you think? What do you think of the shark in a tank? I, I, I think I was blown away by it. I, I thought, thought I'd never seen anything like yeah. it before. It was sort of spectacular because it is so huge and so vast and to have put a shark, you know, in formaldehyde and to have hung it in an art gallery, it's very striking when you see it. Yeah, it's it a is. remarkable achievement. We, but we, what we is went he? Is he an artist or a fishmonger? <laughs> they, <laughs> what he's done, anyone could have done what he did. Yes, but not everyone did it. He did it. <laughs> <laughs> this is an interesting point that you raise. It's the same old point you always <laughs> oh. raise. Not anyone could have done it. That's always the same point you make. Anyone could have done but, it. But they didn't you do it. You can say the same about Michelangelo. Is he an artist or a painter or a decorator? Well, it hasn't caught on, has it, like the crying boy photograph? No one's having them in their house. No one's gone, oh, have you seen this? Have you seen the new trend, a shark in a tank? I'm, no one's got the room, no one wants it. <laughs> and that, to me, shows you what's popular. At the end of the day, if everyone wants one, he's gotta be good, hasn't it? But I think if people were given a chance to appreciate more sophisticated things, then, then, then they would. And I just think that that's, I think that's true in all walks of life. You, you know, it's, it's an acquired taste. And the best things are an acquired taste. They really are. Well, you know, if all you eat is processed cheese and white bread, you get a taste for it. But if you try something that's, you know, in my opinion, better than that, then, you know, you'll leave that behind. That's pretty rich coming from you. I know, I love a bit of cheddar, don't I? I'm, I'm, I'm mother's pride. Yeah. Whereas if you were to be offered perhaps some calamari, your reaction would be? Squid, get it out of my face. Sure, yeah. But I take your point, Rick, thanks <laughs> for it anyway. <laughs> Calamari was an artist, by the way. I mean, I haven't got pictures in, in our flat because of that mirrored wall I've got. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, I mean, it's tiny. You've been in it. I've got windows on one wall, door to get in on the other, kitchen on the other, mirrored wall on the other. <laughs> so, there's no, no space for art. There's no, no space for art. I'm intrigued how you sit at home. Uh, what's the, where's the, where's the sofa? At home. Yeah. Facing the mirror. So you sit looking at yourself all night? Yeah. As opposed to a, a painting? Yeah, but at least that changes each day. No, it doesn't. It does, the picture changes. No, no, changes. it's not. It's round and miserable. Every fucking day. No, no, honestly. It's, it's good to- because you don't look at yourself otherwise. Especially me, I haven't got any hair to comb or anything. So I don't look in the mirror as much as the normal person. So, whereas now, I'm looking there every day. So you're sat at you're home staring at yourself? No, because the telly's in front of the mirror. But are you not so distracted by yourself? Yeah, you do. You? When the adverts are on, you look up, and if Suzanne sat next to me, I tend to talk to her through the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? So, why don't you look at her when you talk to her? Well, you don't, you don't have to turn your neck or anything. There's no neck usage going on. I can just look forward, I look at the telly, lift the eyes up, look in the mirror, look at me, look at her. <laughs> what did she do? Look no, back we're, at you we're used to it. That's, that, there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's like there's more people in the room in a way. It's like, <laughs> and they're further away! There's nothing odd about that. Why wouldn't you use- it doesn't matter. Sorry, your eyes, remember why your eyes wouldn't still... you talk to your girlfriend via a mirror all the time? Is that your question? Well, no, I think it's quite normal. If your head is facing a mirror where you can see everything in that room, you know, it's a small flat, I can see everything that's going on in there without moving my head. <laughs> Stephen Hawking would be well happy. <laughs> So I can look forward, <laughs> she's sat next to me, <laughs> if- if I'm watching the telly I can say something, now she's getting the sound from me still cause she's sat close. Yeah. But yeah, we're further away but things look better from a distance anyway. <laughs> so that's how you've managed to <laughs> keep this relationship alive. You are maybe. Just, you're such an odd little man. But yeah. no, it's, it's not odd. You see there was a woman on- on the estate who- who did use- uh, have I told you about Miss Peggy before? No. It rings a bell. Go on. I think I tell you ages ago, it's this fat woman who used to be on the estate. She had a three-wheeler bike. <laughs> and what, her husband's- Push bike? Pedal bike? Yeah. Like a tricycle thing, yeah. but a big one. Right. She used to sit her husband in the basket in the back. <laughs> cycle about, what have you. Yeah. She was known as Miss Piggy. Anyway. <laughs> oh, is this the one that she used to beat him up so your dad pretended to be a policeman? Yeah, yeah that's it. Oh, that's yeah. One, yeah. You yeah. remember? No, I don't remember yeah. this. 
Yeah, yeah, she, she used to always duff her husband up and that, and people in the area knew that she was being a bit tight on him. And my dad went round with his mate and sort of- But what's this got to do with the mirror? Anyway, well, the way she used to communicate, she used to always go in quick save and nick biscuits. And if anyone <laughs> went up to her to say, stop nicking the biscuits, she'd pull out like a little mirror out of a bag, and she'd look in it, but talk to you via the mirror. <laughs> Oh, man. What, what, what? This so she's insane. She's up. It's weird, isn't it? It's it was like, really weird. Like it was scary. It's, it's like, it's like a Salvador Dali painting. <laughs> you, you exist in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, really So weird. hang on, so she used to talk to people through the mirror, cause she was mental. I couldn't sit, watch the telly, and look at me watching the telly in the mirror all night. No. That's <laughs> no, weird. That would Why? be really weird. It's really weird, Carl. <laughs> oh. I'd be very conscious of myself. No, yeah, I think it gives, you, it gives you confidence in that, and if you are it gives sort you of- confidence? Well, yeah, because you're seeing yourself more and you pick up what habits you do and stuff like that. So what have you changed through your viewing uh, of yourself? I, I, I sort of grew, grew a beard the other week, just something different to look at for a bit. And then you get sick of that, it's like a piece of art. Change that, have a bit of a shave. Can you see the back of the telly in the mirror? A little bit, yeah. If the flat's a mess, it's a mess twice. <laughs> 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 The earliest art, which we know, um, which we call cave paintings, um, they date back between 30 and 10,000 years BC. Even those people tried to brighten up their cave with a bit of art. So in many ways, they were more advanced than you. Yeah, but they didn't have a big mirror. I mean, if you're living in a cave, let's face it, you're not gonna go mad if your kids start drawing, doodling on the, on the cave wall, are you? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Right. Uh, brighten it up. Uh, but they always did the same thing. It was always a yak, wasn't it? <laughs> well, what? they- It was always they, a yak. Yeah, but they drew what they saw. They, I mean, yeah. I love the fact that 30,000 years ago they're being criticised for being a bit literal. No, but surely if all you ever see when you step out the cave is a yak, do something different on the wall for when you get in. <laughs> what? Why is it always a yak on every wall? Is it always a yak? It's always a yak. When you see these Tom Robinson time team programmes- it, Who's it's Tom Robinson? <laughs> He's the Who's guy a, did Murder Way, isn't he? Yeah, and a, a, a 70s singer-songwriter. Tony Robinson, you mean? Tony Robinson. Whenever you see him digging, digging around, they say, oh, hold up everyone, get the brush, what's this, what's this? It's always a yak. <laughs> yeah, they pretend they're interested. So you're them. saying that you, you wouldn't have, you'd have been so, no, I'm not gonna draw a yak, I just saw a yak outside. This is what I'm saying to you about trends. One person has it, the next caveman goes, oh, I'll have one of them on my wall. Yeah, I'll do a yak. Why was there no one just doing something a bit different? Well, like, it's what? not true. They did. It's not true. This thing about it's a yak. It's just in your own head. I've, 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 the programs I've seen, it's, I've, I've been to Pompeii where they had, uh, doodling on the walls. <clears throat> and that was all like knobs, tits and arse. Yeah. All over the shop. Now, do that now. People go, that's a disgrace. Rub that out. Clean that. Get it down. Whereas now, if you see one in Pompeii, they're going, oh, look at that. Look at the detail on that. Well, yeah. that's what I'm saying, this snobbery in art. It's the same knob. The knob has not changed. <laughs> 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 yeah, but I imagine in 50,000 years' time, if they dig up, you know, a cubicle and there's tits and arse, oh, people yeah. can take pictures of it, it won't again. Be. This is, this is the interesting thing with the way we live now. We're cleaning stuff up constantly now. There's no, uh, almost no record of- of our time. Cause we're getting rid of everything. We clean everything up, everything's clean. Getting rid of rubbish, recycling everything. Well that's a very good point. Is graffiti, um, a, a valid art form? Some of it is. I think it is, yeah. I mean, we're not talking about the, uh, the- the classic spunking dick, which is still- I mean, it's still great, isn't it? Well, I mean, if, if I- If you see a lovely clean white wall and you see a spunking dick on it, you're gonna laugh. Always laugh. Do you add hair to the- to testicles when drawing uh, the spunking dick? a few. The testicles- Cause I'm all, the I, it's always clean. My- my testicles are always clean. Really? Yeah, I, I put, never- uh, I put, you know, the four or five bristles sticking out straight. See, I always thought that was a kind of common aversion It of looks it. like- mine looks like, um, I don't mean my real one. I- I mean my, um, uh, Your illustrative. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks tight like- Two gooseberries and Thunderbird 2. Do you add much detail, um, at the tip of the penis? No, it's a straightforward, it's d dissection across, just a, a line across, uh, 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 to, to show the helmet. Yep. Then one little line, 
for the the the, the, and the, the do eye. you tend to keep the same number of droplets coming out? I, droplets. I do three, but I don't do the line. I actually do the little tear drop. Little tear droplets. droplets spunk, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is the that is the spunk and dick. Mm. As, uh, mm. as when I, I was it. at school, it was referred to, and this may be specific to Bristol. It was referred to as the sacred. I've just drawn a sacred. Oh really? Uh, I don't know if, where, where the origin of that was. Some graffiti is funny. I, um, my uh, I <laughs> I saw one uh, in London. It just said, "Rachel is a big assed big chinned cunt." Now, I think Rachel's going to see that and know. Well, that, well, I'm I'm the only big assed big chinned cunt round here. I don't know how big her chin was. Sure. I think of her chin maybe looking like the ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the yeah. big ass that little bit. Maybe she couldn't see the last part of it because the chin was in the way. Rachel is a be- and that's now, all she could see. where was this graffiti written? It was in, uh, um, near Centre Point. So, do you think someone was so angry well, with I Rachel? Well, I think- well, maybe Rachel nicked this woman's fella. Right. And she went out- Yeah, and, and scored put, that. Yeah. In a lot of different places. I saw one that was something- I don't know it was back in Bristol, it was something like, Michael Peters is gay. And I always wondered if that was Michael Peters himself, who was having trouble coming out of the closet. <laughs> yeah. And was just writing that in a number of different places. So that by the time you finally mentioned people, they went, oh yeah, I knew that. Anyway, I saw it in the toilet. Sculptures. What do you think of sculptures? I mean, cause that's something that really is getting into the, the 3D world there, isn't it? No longer do you have to represent something as 3D. You can make something. You know, is it, you know, the statues are, are amazing, aren't they? They're clever, aren't they? I mean, um, they always look the same. Well, that's not true, is it? Because recently there was, uh, quite a controversial one, a huge one in London, uh, the pregnant, uh, thalidomide woman. What do you think of that? Oh, yeah, I saw that. Thoughts? I wouldn't have it in my house. <laughs> well, there wouldn't be room, because it would just be you, Suzanne, and a pregnant thalidomide watching telly. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what he was trying to say, it's uh... Maybe she was saying, okay, we've had the human form, this is an example of the human form. Yeah, but do you think she started off trying to do normal, and it was like, <laughs> oh, I've chipped a bit off. <laughs> <laughs> she, one of the arms got chipped well, off. Well, it makes you wonder, doesn't it? And why, you see that, <laughs> that square, Trafalgar Square, <sighs> you, you've got that. Nelson's column, he's got one arm and a leg missing or something and a patch over his eye. Then you've got the th thalidomide. Why can't they just do a full person? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! That, that was what they saw. That was what the artist saw. It's like, it's about confronting us with certain preconceptions of what that, what we expect of the human form, what we expect of sculpture. It's probably a little ironic comment as well on the famous Rodin. It's wrapped up with all kinds of ideas of maternity, of the human form, of what sculpture is. Why wouldn't you put that in a big public place? What about the subject? Did you think, uh, who's that subject? Who is that woman? No, not really, because, because the Lidomides are around and we, we've, we've all seen one. It's not like a shocking, a shocking image. It's one of life's little things that it chucks out. There's some out there. Amazing. So it's not- it's Amazing. not shocking, is it? I don't understand what you mean. I think what I thought is, it just goes to show we're sort of running out of- of ideas. What do you think of people who are so angry at art, they, uh, they try and censor it, or they try and destroy it? Uh, do you think art should ever be censored? It's where you put it. If it's in a gallery, then it doesn't have to be censored. If it's in Trafalgar Square, where everyone's wandering around having a nice time, you don't want a twelve foot cock. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all about where you put it. I think some art looks better because of where it is. <laughs> Angel in the North, that's a bit of art, but it's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? You're driving along a miserable motorway. Yeah. Oh, what's that over there? It gives you something for your eyes to look at again. Motorway is mm. the most boring place to drive. Mm. But you go, oh, look, there's a, there's a bit of art over there. Yeah, but, Stick that but then again, should you be looking at art when you, you, when you're going at 70 miles an hour along a motorway? Well, yeah, cause it's really big. You can keep your eye on it and, and- Look in know, the mirror. You can, you, it's not a problem. Wait till you go past it and look in the mirror like normal. But so you like the Angel of the North? Because it's, it's, it's something in the middle of nothing. Right, but if you put it somewhere else- Stick it in Trafalgar Square, you'd go, oh, more clutter. <laughs> <laughs> now you've spoken 
uh, Carl about, you know, art and what impact does it have, blah, blah, blah. And as Ricky's just pointed out, of course, in some instances, art has been considered incredibly controversial, very provocative, and has been banned. Famously, one thinks of the Nazis b banning and burning certain books, not all of which were just books, you know, criticising them. It was often artistic works, things which they felt were subversive in some sense. And you get that in many repressive regimes, where people's artistic work is not allowed to express the way they feel about something. Stalinist Russia, for instance, art their literature, are not able to express its views because people see it as dangerous, as provocative. Well, yeah, the threat always comes from scholars, uh, with, like, any dictatorship, you know, and they know that. But not just, not just scholars, uh, writing, you know, scholarly texts, criticisms, but also people expressing themselves through poetry, through creativity. Well, yeah, Things which are not direct. Dangerous. Yeah. They can be abstract, and yet they can still be subversive. Yeah, but I think if it's done in a way that isn't just like a lunatic, uh, they get away with it. Like a nice poem, some people would see it, read it in a different light. I might read it and go, I don't even know what they're going on about there. So, as long as it's done clever, get away with it, don't they? So well, it no, makes the artist the case, better. But that's not often not the case, that's well, what I'm saying. Often, well, in these regimes, these things are repressed. No, but there's always like code words and that that you can use and they can't have you on it. Such as? I don't know. I'm, I'm not into that sort of work. Right, well, so you, you've just made a statement there, but it's not backed up with any actual information. No, well, if you well there was a good point way. there. No, there was a very good point there. Um, uh, the McCarthy era, where, um, he, uh, he was threatened by communism, uh, infiltrating the country, and, and he thought that, uh, entertainers might be a part of that, the conspiracy. It was a hotbed, and, uh, he made everyone come forward, writers, actors, say they're not they're not a communist, and, uh, some people were out in the cold. And so people had to be a bit cleverer, like, um, uh, was it Arthur Miller, the Arthur Crucible? Miller. Um, it's a, it's a metaphor. It's about witch hunts, but it's about the McCarthyism. So, yes, good point. You, you can put coded messages CB into CB Radio art. was the same thing. Go on. Well, it was all the codes. Mm. Do, yeah, okay, codes. well, I thought you had a, I have, I, I mean, I was trying to make your point sort of more valid than it obviously was. No, but was. if you, if you need to refer to CB Radio, that's the obvious... Well, that's, that's what I can relate to. Sure. Yeah, we've done this, there's no point in CB radio. They go, they go, uh, how many candles are you burning? What? How old are you? Eight. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's no point to those codes at all, you know. So this is in no way, re this is in no way relatable to The Crucible. Why would you be talking about one of the most respected plays of the 20th, 20th, the 20th century, and suddenly this, in your head, reminds you of CB radio? Just having, having this code going on that only certain people knew everyone, how to break. Everyone, everyone knew it. <laughs> no, it's pointless. It, not, not back then <clears> they didn't. Pointless. Um, I remember we, uh, we were shown, uh, the cartoon version of Animal Farm when we were about, like, 15, 16, and we were discussing it afterwards about, oh, yeah, the you know, oh, yeah, great, oh, yeah, communism versus, oh, the poor proletariat and all this, and this bloke went, you lot make me sick. It was just a nice film about some animals. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. What, what's your take on that, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, go on, go on, go on, what's your point? Because you I can see the irony there, can't you? I haven't, I haven't seen it. No. Uh, if you, you want to do a serious point, don't use animals. No? Well, I, I disagree with there because, um, we're gonna get onto literature later and I think, um, my favourite is probably Charles Dickens and I think the greatest story ever told is A Christmas Carol and there's only one way that could ever be improved and that is a Muppet Christmas That's Carol. That's absolutely right, yeah. So, uh, and I think that you could, and I think people could take a lesson from that and maybe do other films with the Muppets. A Muppet Schindler's List. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you could make it so moving, couldn't you? Schindler's List in space! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think it would certainly help bring that story to a wider audience. I think so, yeah. More people who are, like Carl, who were put off perhaps by the depressing black and white, black and white of it, they would suddenly see the Muppets singing and dancing. Miss Piggy's Choice. Miss, Miss Piggy's Choice, yeah, yeah. Well, have we talked about that? What? About things like that in, in art as well. Do you think that, that some, bringing something so serious uh, to the masses, like, 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 like films do, things like the Holocaust, and, uh, like Sophie's Choice, where she has to choose which child, um, lives and dies. Why does she have to pick? Well, because the Nazis were horrible, nasty, evil people. And which one did she pick? I, d I don't, I don't think that's the point. I don't think that's the point. This I love not, the idea that This is not a betting game. No, but I imagine this is, this is like deal no deal. It's kind of you're down to the last <laughs> down to the last two. <laughs> which one are you gonna go for? Oh god. <laughs> but why did you ask which one did she choose? Because 
<laughs> even if he'd said the names Robert and Alison, what difference would it make? You don't know the story. Why is no, it? Because that then said I'd ask more. I'd ask more. Then if if he said Alison, I'd go. What, what was it with Alison? That what did she have over Robert? That's what films are meant to do. You question it. Whenever I watch a film with Suzanne, I always say at the end, "What was going on there?" Oh, That's because Jesus you're an idiot. Christ! That's because you've just watched Muppet Christmas Carol and you can't understand why a frog's able to talk. <laughs> I'm all for films with a, with a good storyline. Yeah, brilliant. That's a perfect <laughs> point. <laughs> One Go extraordinary on. point. Go on, there's gonna, this is gonna be, he's gonna follow this up, mate. He's gonna follow this up. He's got something up. here, he's got Come something on. here. Carl, well, go on then, what's your no, take on films? Films, films are really good. You can, you can get lost in them. Right. And, uh... You like one with a good story? I like, I, I mean, whenever anyone asks, it's always the same. It's Elephant Man. Mm. It's Kez. Mm. Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> Mission, <laughs> Impossible Mission Impossible 2. <laughs> These are your, these are the, what you consider the great works no, of film No, I'm just saying art. these are ones that I've enjoyed, enjoyed recently. There's so many films that I haven't seen, yet you always say, oh, have you seen so-and-so? You well, Mission Impossible 1. <laughs> <laughs> and there's good news for you, three's out. <laughs> That's true. One of the most striking art exhibitions that I ever attended, Carl, was an exhibition of outsider art, I'm something I'm sure you're very familiar with. Outsider art, of course, is work that is made by people who are often institutionalised for mental health problems, um, or they are just incredibly, you know, uh, the people who aren't in any way part of the art establishment. Well, they're all, right up to psychopathic murderers, uh, clinically insane mass murderers would count as outsider art. Um, I, I went to an outsider art exhibition in New York, um, it was incredible, and I bought a, a, a painting of this guy, he's a, a, a chronic schizophrenic, and he paints in tar, like road tar, mm. that he gets from roads, and he paints in that on wood he finds in sort of skips, and it's incredible, because it's sort of like scratched in. And, uh, it, it's amazing, and it's this thing of Jesus being helped down off the cross. And you have to study it, but it's there, and it's, it's quite incredible that it's just scratched in this wood by tar. And there's loads of things that I was walking around, um, admittedly I was walking around there going, this is fucking mental, and James was going, you've got to stop saying that. Cause of course some of the people are mental. mental. <laughs> um, there was one bloke doing the sculpture of a skull, right? <laughs> and underneath. It was like a little head with his teeth. Underneath, he put a sign that said "real teeth." <laughs> <laughs> Where did he get the real teeth from? <laughs> what I think is interesting about that is how much therapy it provides for these often mentally unstable people, which is another important value of art. Of course, people self-expression, people being able to give a little piece of themselves through their work. Do you not see any value in that? How do you express yourself? Whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you whistle. Uh, yeah, I found over Christmas I whistled a lot more than I, uh, I usually do. And I think that was just freedom. What do you mean freedom? So right. freedom. Expand on this point if you would. Well that's, that's what art is, isn't it? It's you being free of all the world's heaviness on your shoulders. See, that's a great quote, that. That's mm -hmm. great that, for art is freedom. I yeah. love that, because I think, I think you've really hit on something there. Would you, would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? Well, I know what you meant, I know what you, you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling, uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So, Not just take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. When would the whistling begin? So, so uh, uh, this was that you spent, you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah. Yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking, I'm in my own place now, I'm gonna annoy them. Well, it was mainly, it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble. Mm. And they were taking ages to have their go, and, um, uh, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> It works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> I think you've really hit on something there. 
Would you would you include the free of all the world's heaviness? And well, I know, what you, well, meant, I know you, what you meant there. Would you I include mean, that one in it? I mean, I would include the world's heaviness in my freedom. You know, some artists are attracted to the dark side, the heaviness of the world. But I just want to, I just want to return to you whistling uh, as your yeah. artistic expression of freedom. I mean, uh, what, uh, why did you find yourself whistling more? That's what was weird. So Not just take us off. through a typical See, uh, day. Uh, when would the whistling begin? So, so uh, uh, this was that you spent you spent <coughs> Christmas down in Kent with Suzanne and her parents. Yeah, yeah. Could, could I suggest something? Your freedom was thinking I'm in my own place now. I'm going to annoy them. Well, it was mainly it's, it's when we were playing Scrabble, mm. and they were taking ages to have their go, and um, couldn't have the radio on because the boiler affects the radio. <laughs> Um, it sort you of got boiler with problems it. Don't you got it, well. work, it works, it just gives something off. Every time it kicks in, the radio goes all staticky. Right. Um, so I just was sort of supplying the soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> and what kind of things would you be whistling? It was like, I just sort of did a whistle medley. Mm. It was going mm. from one thing to another. A wedley? And a, a man was impressed, she was like, oh you can whistle can't you? I was going, yeah. And then she was saying, how loud can you go? I was just doing all different levels. Sorry, this sounds like a scene from One Floor of the Cuckoo's Nest. The boy is setting off the radio, I can whistle, oh you're good whistling, aren't you? <laughs> oh yeah, it's grab out. Talk about outsider art. I love the fact that Carl's life is like living in a home it when is. you're in your 80s. Yeah. But you felt that this was your way of expressing yourself. I just found it odd, because I'm not, I don't whistle that much. Um, I think just because I'm, I think I'm fed up most of the time when I'm in London. Mm. And you mm. never get, you don't whistle when you're fed up. You whistling's a happy thing. Mm. You never get a, an angry man suddenly breaking into a, a well, whistle. Well, the people who aren't whistling are usually pissed off. But yeah, the bloke who's whistling, it's like, uh, yeah, it's the least. He he's the least annoyed person in the room when someone's whistling. Same as holding a drill. The only person that noise doesn't annoy is the bloke who's drilling. Everyone else wants to bunch his face in. Same with whistling. Whistling, there's, the, the, there's no point in whistling. No, th there is. No, there's not. The only, the only good, the, the, uh, the only point to whistling is in a bloke's changing room, everyone's whistling, going, I'm not looking at your cock. If I'm whistling, I can't be looking at your cock. Anything else, there's no other, there's no, calling a dog, maybe. Calling a dog. It changes the atmosphere. Yeah, it annoys everyone else. Dunno. I mean, our, our window cleaner was known as like, you know, that's how he knew he was there. He always whistled. And in the end, he fell off his ladder, broke his front teeth. Oh, retired. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because he couldn't whistle. That was it. It was like well, yeah, can't he whistles whistle. all the time. Can't whistle. Well, yeah. Can't clean windows. It's a bit tragic. Could he take along a whistle? Just pop that in his mouth. Yeah, I suppose he could have done. He didn't think of that. What about a flute or a recorder? Not London's burning again. Fucking clean the windows and then fuck off. <laughs> he didn't really think this through, did he? He retired at the age of twenty-eight, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and his whole family with, were bankrupt <laughs> with no teeth. Yeah, and just a why bucket and a squeegee. Why are you working, Dad? Because I can't whistle. I can't whistle anymore. And if the day you give up whistling is the day I give up window cleaning. <laughs> so you never whistle? No, I can't really whistle very well. <laughs> no. I, well, I, I don't whistle, but I can whistle better than that. What, you did this for hours on end while playing Scrabble? About two hours. Fuck two hours? Out. Put my word down. And and then, sorry, can we just hear that again? Just hear, can we hear it? <laughs> so you were, whistling, is, you were whistling after you had your go as oh well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fucking hell, Carl. But hang on, let's just hear a bit. <laughs> that is Carl's self-expression. That is his artistic self-expression right there. A name. No tune, no nothing. There's mental patients who have smeared <laughs> canvases with shit who have expressed more than you have in that. Yeah, but it's not about other people. I'm not there to please other people. Right. You're there to annoy them. What was the best word you came up with in Scrabble? Don't knock me out Scrabble, because I do alright. What's weird is, mm. when I play Scrabble, my brain can oh, come up with words that I don't normally say. Sake. Okay, this isn't- no, I'm intrigued here. Your brain can come up with words you wouldn't normally say. Just words that I, I'd never drop into a sentence. Tree, cat. Go on. Squirm. <laughs> That's using a Q. It's worth ten, Matt. It's not bad, is it? No, I'd never say that. <laughs> I've never heard you- I don't think I've ever heard you say squirm, no. <laughs> I don't think you're right, Carl. I've never heard you say squirm. Weird, isn't it? Yeah, it is weird. And yet your brain popped that one out? And then, yeah, when it wasn't I go, just- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God! Christ, <laughs> 
Anyway, so that's sort of doing art for yourself as opposed for other people. I don't think you can count what you just did then as art. Hobby maybe, craft, pastime. I don't think mm. you can count that as art. I'm not being funny. I'm being a bit snobby here. But I think there's a difference between Beethoven and <laughs> Squirm. <laughs> <laughs> there's a cue in that. No, no. Classical music. I wish I was more educated on classical music. That which I've heard, I've adored. Mm. I, I genuinely find it challenging because it is so spectacular. It is so, it is so of another place. Where do you sit with classical music? It's good. It's good for background. I think. Right. Um, see, I, I, you know me. I like a song with a story, and there's nothing going on in them. That's uh, the problem with that is how many times can you hear the same story? Quite a lot. How many times can you watch the same film? Same thing, except it's shorter than watching a film. Yeah, but the film goes into the story with more depth than a three-minute song. Yeah, but there's also, do you know like when you watch, um, what's an example? Say, uh, I'm trying to think of a film. Yeah, there's not many. Uh, no, but a moment in a film that, it doesn't what? matter how many times you watch it, you go, I, I enjoyed that bit. Um, Godfather swings to well, mind. Well, say, no, over Christmas, On the Buses was on the, the movie. <laughs> oh, for Jesus. He went when with The Godfather, he went with On the Buses. I mean, <laughs> oh, God. Brando, Varney, I don't know which is better. <laughs> it was the bit where, like, the toilet blows up after chucking a fag in. That's had paint in it. Right. I've Sorry, that's that. in, that's in All the Buses. That's not in The Godfather. <laughs> I can't remember that. Maybe that's Godfather too. Well, the thing is, I enjoyed that bit and I knew it was coming. It's like, oh, I'll, I'll just watch this before I nip out and put the kettle on. Mm. Let's just see this How bit. many times have you seen the On the Buses film? about four or five times. Sure, why not? But all I'm saying is, music is there to <laughs> sing over. No, it's not! Music is there to sing over. That's a ridiculous thing to say. Music does something to me. I don't know what it is. I don't know- I don't know why a chord can say something to you. I don't know, mate. Gives you that feeling. Uh, I, I'm in awe of it. I'm in awe of musicians. Yeah. My favourite piece of music, uh, is a thing by Vaughan Williams. Um, it's five variants of Dives and Lazarus, right? And there's a bit there where it hits this chord and I, 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 I can't listen to it when I'm away from home because I, I, I well up. It reminds me of everything. England, just, uh, it does something to me and it does it on, on a level that I can't sort of quite understand. It's just uh, immaculate. It's I it just again. don't think you can beat, beat a decent vocal on top of that. <laughs> Oh, that's amazing! My mum's got a CD of, uh, Roger Whittaker, right? Right, whistling again. No. <laughs> he does- he, wh he whistles Jealous Guy. Now the thing is, I can't listen to that and, and whistle along. I end up singing Jealous Guy on top of it. So, singing Trump's whistling? Uh, yeah, when someone else is doing the whistling. Okay. I like whistling, but if someone else has did that first- yeah. So if I'm Roger singing, was singing Jealous Guy, you'd be I'd whistling? I'd be whistling it. So, to make the classics live on, I'm surprised someone hasn't gone. I can- I can add to this and dub on a bit of vocal. So you would have classical music with lyrics? Just for people who Beethoven's who fifth. That. Beethoven's fifth. You- that would be better to you, that would- <laughs> <laughs> But what are you meant to do with it? How- what do you do? When you've got that on then, do you whistle along or No, do I don't whistle along. Hum? I just- I- I let it- oh, Do you Carl, whistle along? I just don't know what to well, say. Why are you obliged to whistle? That's the only way you can enjoy music, if you can whistle along. Well, that's the same with anything. A good song, you join in, don't you? It's like, oh, I like this one. Yeah. No! So, by that token, YMCA is one of the greatest of all tunes. I mean, it's not one of my favourites, but you can't knock it. It certainly gets the crowd up when- I mean, I did DJing and- Why do you care about the crowd? Popular. Who are this crowd? Well, I'm just saying- Who are this crowd that you have to live in your head with? Fuck the crowd. Most of them are idiots. Although, admittedly, if I was doing a wedding DJing set, I probably <laughs> would do YMCA <laughs> over Vaughan Williams. And why is that? Because it's- it's happier go lucky. It's done in three minutes. Classical music goes on for ages. Mm. It no, fades a good out, point. It Who's fades out, it comes back in again. Well- Mm. It's a good point. It's all over the shop. Are yeah. you going or are you staying? It's over time. And yeah. I'm not saying we should get rid of it. And I, I might grow into it, because I think that's music for older people. Well, I, you're right. I, I think Mozart would disagree, as he- I think he did his first symphony when he was five or six. Probably playing piano and writing music before you could read. When- th did the piano come out when he was a kid? What do you mean? If it was trendy to have a piano when he was a kid, it's like how kids now- they're messing about on Google at the age of two. 
because the laptop is new. It's mm. new to us. To them, it's like, oh, well, it's Google, isn't it? What's your point? Because he was born at the right time. Beethoven. Yeah, he was no, born. Mozart. So you're saying Mozart. that all three year olds around the time of Mozart were brilliant? There would have been a, quite a lot of them. Mozart, Beethoven, all that. They're all, uh, Andal. They're all around the same <laughs> time, aren't they? <laughs> Just guessing. Wild stabs in the dark. Just names he's heard. <laughs> Just names he's heard. <laughs> So when were Ricky they, was young, when no, I presume no, Rolf Harris's stylophone came out, everyone was composing <laughs> on the stylophone, Yeah, exactly. It's all, it's all what you brought up with, isn't it? Nothing's hard if, if you're given it when you're a kid. Nothing's difficult. Mm. You can be taught all sorts. I haven't got room for a piano. It's too big for a pastime. A hobby shouldn't take up a whole corner of a room. It's so know. limited, isn't it? His scope, his imagination. Yeah. But a piano, the idea that a piano in a house would be a frustration and annoyance. Music. That you could play Harmony. there. But I'd worry about annoying other people with it as No, well. you don't. You whistle when you're playing Scrabble. You don't <laughs> worry about annoying people at all. I'm sure people would rather have gentle piano music in the background than... <laughs> squirm. <laughs> squirm. So, one of the earliest and most celebrated art forms that's, you know, along with painting and music still going today, is the play. And, of course, the most famous and celebrated exponent of that is our very own William Shakespeare. Some say maybe the greatest literary genius in history. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not a fan. Right. And I'll tell you why I'm not a fan. One reason and one reason only. Sure. Nothing to do with the structure, his themes, uh, uh, fantastic. The pun. Right. Oh, I can't stand the pun. Yeah, but I mean, although Shakespeare did include a few puns in his work, I don't think you could... No, I suppose it's the people it's that have taken on down. the pun. It just reminds me of a bloke in a beard and a, and a, and a pipe at a party doing puns, you know. And it's things like Shakespeare, things like, um, oh, take their maiden heads. And you have to look at your Brody's notes to go, okay, cut off their heads, uh, and take their virginity, oh, brilliant. You know, you can't, it's like, you can't explain a joke in retrospect. You don't laugh if you then explain to you. I'm have to, gonna have to take issue with the idea that Shakespeare was not a truly great master of our language. I think he was. If uh, you I, listen, I, if he you added listen to, to the language. He invented, uh, words, or at least he stole words and, and, and changed them, but he took them from, you know, other languages, which is uh, to t totally valid. And, um, he made up loads of sayings that are still around today, and there's a poetry in that, inventing new, um, actually, Carl, you like sayings, don't you? Um, I've got a list here Sorry. of some of the, 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 the sayings and phrases that, that Shakespeare made up, really. Um, in a pickle was his. Yeah. Well, well, um, and we know what in a pickle yeah, means. Yeah, we know, we know what it means. I, 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 it's a saying I, I'd never use. Because when you're in a pickle, it's not something that you would say. No, if you're being sort of, if you're captured and you're being tortured for information, yeah. you wouldn't, and you, and you get access to a phone, you wouldn't call and go, MI5, I'm in a pickle. Mm. You'd be screaming, going, he's taking my teeth out. Much as I love Shakespeare, is when that play was first staged and someone said during the play, ooh, I'm in a pickle. Did the audience understand, or were they baffled? Or was it like watching Ken Dodd when he goes, Yumbunctious! <laughs> exactly. Oh, Tenefilarius! Yeah. So Shakespeare is about as good as Ken Dodd. That's what we appear to have established. While you've been talking about that, I just was looking on the computer at, uh, the Pun of the Day website, because I feel I take much of what you say about puns and agree with it. Uh, there's a couple that you might, you might like. There was a sign on the lawn at a drug rehab centre that said, keep off the grass. Okay, okay, now if the pun is the lowest form of wit, and uh, let's face it, sarcasm isn't, sarcasm is up there compared to the pun, then the drug pun, I think, is one of the lowest of the low. Oh, people who congratulate themselves on getting drug references, keep off the grass, will <laughs> Grass, get it? Grass, you know, smoking the grass, you know. Show me a piano falling down a mine shaft. And I'll show a flat you minor. a flat minor. Oh, God. Okay, good. Okay. Do you get that? Well, these yeah. are, I mean, that sums up puns, isn't it? It's things that kids get in a cracker. I think pun should be short for punch him in the mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Idioms are better. Go on then, what's an idiom? Uh, Is that a new word you made up? No, I, I think Carl Pilkington's a complete idiom. <laughs> yeah. I, I found out what it was because I thought, oh, I like them, what are they? Right. And it's like little sayings. Yeah, that's right. That's some stuff up. Go on, give us an example of your favourite. Okay, I'll just say one, uh, 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 talking about sayings, Carl was getting fed up with summer. He was, uh, uh, he was fed up with not getting replies from something. He's, you know, he's having a hard time, you know. And, uh, I went, oh, the worm has turned. He went, 
What? I went in the worm has turned. You know, you've- Stupid saying, isn't it? No, t well, okay, tell him why you think that's a stupid saying. Because how do you know when a worm's turned? <laughs> <laughs> of right. all the creatures that you could flip over and know it's turned, <laughs> why pick a worm? It's a bad- it's a- it's- it's the worst thing they could have picked to express something turning. <laughs> but you're taking turning literally. It means changing, doesn't it? Changing your attitude. A new broom, turning over a new leaf. Yeah, but-, but Things are gonna be different now and I'm pick sick of it. Chameleon. No, but- Chameleon is a brilliant thing to use for something to change. <sighs> Chuck that in the sentence. There's- there's- there's nothing that you can link a worm to human life too. You're talking about something that's- it, it's blind, isn't it? It's blind, <laughs> it's deaf. Gay. It's got no features. <laughs> Why is he having such a go at a worm? Just because it's- it's a weird thing to use. Something that- it's arse is more- it does more than it's head. <laughs> that could be said of you, Carl, to be fair. <laughs> We've talked about, about what art is, we've talked about painting, sculpture, we've talked about music briefly, we've talked about whistling over music to make it better. Um, poetry, uh, a completely different type of art form there. Carl, what's your thoughts on poetry? I've never really been a, a fan of it. This is a surprise. I, I think it's, it's sort of, uh, it's alright for the person who's doing it, you know, you say that whistling is just for the whistler. But I think poetry is more like that because you sometimes you read it and you're thinking, what's he going on about? It's always a bit. I don't know. It's sold in a bad light. It's a bit sort of, a bit gay, isn't it? Right. Okay. I mean, it depends what sort you're talking about because maybe there's poetry out there that I haven't heard. There's some poetry gayer than others. Yeah. War poetry can't be gay, can it? That was people. I haven't heard. Go on. People fighting in the trenches and that can't be gay. They weren't gay. They were. They were writing to their sweetheart. I, I don't know his name. He might might have been a bloke. I don't know. But so is was it was it a sort of a what sort of poem was it? Was it a sort of a limerick? Sort of a no. It was it was uh, well. There's, there's there's famous ones, Wilfred Owen and Siegfried Sassoon, and they're very moving. They're about uh, you know the, 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 what usually happens is that they talk about why are we here? This is you know we've been we've been sold a, a lie here, you know, and they really started seeing war in a different light from 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 their point of view in the trenches, famously some of them died so soon after the, you know, they'd written the proper, poem. But I prefer a proper, a proper letter. No sort of crypticness. That's the problem with right. poems. okay. You so you'd, it, you'd have been disappointed to get Dolce at Decorum S through the post, would you? You'd have just said, what are you trying to say, mate? Is, what's the weather like? When you're coming home? Did you get my socks? Well, yeah, sometimes life is a bit like that, innit? It's like, say what you mean. Right. Well, that's the, well. Then that th you have just wiped all art off the face of the earth. If you literally just say what you mean. No, I'm just saying in a letter. Say if I say if I was a woman and me fella was fighting in a war. Right. What's your fella's name? The, Harry. Okay, so Harry. Oh, let me get this right. So when were you married? Uh, about nineteen uh, nineteen thirty-five. Nineteen thirty-five. So uh, you've been married about four years, yeah. Harry. Why don't, you, why don't you go off? Oh, you're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. You don't look okay. So what, what? What did you see in Harry? What? What, what did? You, why did you like Harry? Was he? He just was like funny. Uh, butch. It wasn't that butch, but that no. didn't matter back then, did it? In the war. No. And you. He and took you everyone. But what did you say when Harry was say what said to you? Well, I, I, I thought it was coming because a lot of uh, a lot of our friends right. ended up. Having did to you just go hug there. him and say don't go or something? No point because that would have just made it tough for him. So. <laughs> What's the point? Just go with it. But if he I had cried after he went, you cried after he went. That's what you do, isn't it? You wouldn't do it in front of him. He's got. To, he's got to go to battle. Okay, so your man goes off to battle. Right. Then I get a, a letter from the colonel right. saying, "Oh, bit of bad news. Harry's dead." Now I get a letter in the post. <laughs> he said. He said what he meant, didn't he? In the well, yeah, and they would do, wouldn't they? They wouldn't yeah. fanny around saying, "Oh, he was he was on the warpath and the cloud, the cloud went dark." I go, w w "What? Just tell me what happened. I don't want a weather forecast." He got shot at the arse and the bullet came out his head. Right now, the colonel he, he would just tell me the basics. Now, <laughs> because he sent his by um, telegram, telegram, telegram. They sent a telegram. Mm. The letter I get from Harry has been stamped, so I get it late. Oh, right? okay. So I get a letter from uh from Harry 
after he's died. Yeah. Right, and you know he's dead. I know he's dead, so I get right. this letter with his handwriting on, I'm yeah. devastated, because I was just getting over his death. Yeah. It's all brought back to me when this letter drops through the post. Well, yeah, three right. days and you're pretty much over it. He's had yeah. his handwriting. Yeah. Oh, God, what's this? We'll now I open written. it. Yeah. And instead of saying, things are bad here, socks are damp, uh, you know, everything's grim, it's cold, I'm sick of it, there's a poem. It wouldn't feel like it was from Harry. Well, what, because it's not in his words. Poems are never in the in the person's words. But did you know how he was a poet when you married him and made love to him no, that I night? I picked it up because other people were doing it. Something to do in the trenches. But when he carried you over the threshold, Carl, and he, he laid you down and gently kissed you, didn't he? Didn't he say any? Didn't he ever? So he, he must have whispered some sweet nothings into no, your hysterical like red hair. No, like that, straight no. to the point. He was like, "Get your knickers off." <laughs> <laughs> things gayer than poetry though. I wanna, I wanna uh, throw one into the pot. The Continental Breakfast. Oh. The Continental Breakfast. Yes. That annoys me when I see it. Who orders that? If you've got the choice of eggs, beans, burger, Sausage. chips, uh, sausages, Bacon. all that, you've paid for it already. If I was a waiter and someone said, uh, what do you want for breakfast, mate? And the bloke went, oh, I just have a little bit of grapefruit juice and a croissant. I go, do you? Do you want some cum on that? Or you can go back to the hotel and suck a cock. Yeah. So, no, I'm, uh, I'm with you there. what else is, um, what else is gayer than poetry? I remember when I was at school once, right? Uh, the worst thing you could be growing up was gay. Yeah. In school. It was the wor- it was the worst thing. It was the, you know. And, um, I remember I was about 14, 15, I was talking to this bloke, I talk about him on my stand-up, um, David Beasley. He's the one that said if you get captured by cannibals, they show you pornographic pictures when you're in the pot, so you get an erection and there's more meat yeah. to go around. So he, he was a, he was an idiot. He made Carl look smart. Wow. Really. Wow. Um, and, uh, he said, you know that thing that uh, kids always do, what would you rather be, blind or deaf? Yeah. We did that, and we discussed that for a while, and he went, what would you rather be, blind or queer? Mm. And I went, well, I'd rather be gay, cos... Still got all your sights, yeah. And he, he went, oh, would ya? I went, well, yeah, well, ra- rather than be blind, I said, yeah, well, I said, also, if you were gay, You'd like being gay. He went, I wouldn't. <laughs> I went, no, you would. I said, if you were gay, you would like being gay. He went, I wouldn't, Gervais. Sounds like you would. I went, well, if I was gay, I would like being gay. He went, well, I wouldn't. And he looked at me accusingly, and I went, no, nor would I, but gays would. Which made no sense at all. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah, the idea. Yeah, yeah. But this is just like such, such a stonewall uh, 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 that, that I'd rather be anything than gay. Yeah. Carl, thoughts? Blind or gay? This is about art, is it? So there you have it. Our comprehensive and definitive guide to the arts. Next in this series is philosophy. Well, I'm looking forward to that one enormously, Rick, because of course you have a honours degree from the University of London in philosophy. Yes, but I predict that that one will also be as big a load of bollocks as all the others we've done. Thank you. Just to remind you that you can still get the Ricky Gervais Guide to Medicine, the Ricky Gervais Guide to Natural History, and now of course the Ricky Gervais Guide to the Arts. Philosophy is the science which considers truth. So said Aristotle, one of the great forefathers of Western philosophy. In its attempt to seek out the truths and principles of human existence, philosophy must answer questions of beauty, of justice, of language, indeed, of the mind itself. To help me consider some of the core concepts and presumptions of philosophical inquiry, I'm joined by Stephen Merchant, graduate of the University of Warwick, an award-winning writer. It's a pleasure to be here. And Carl Pilkington, a man with no education, didn't really go to school, no awards, head like a fucking orange, you know the twat. All right. <laughs> To me, philosophy might be the greatest subject of all academic subjects, the, the mother of science, um, asking the big questions, why are we here, how do we live, 
but it's been sort of mugged and kidnapped by those people who put rubbish under the umbrella of philosophy. Right. Cod philosophy. I went into a library once, I looked in the uh, philosophy section, and there was a book by Doris Stokes. Doris Stokes being, for those that don't know? A, 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 a medium who said she was talking to the dead. There's crystals, feng shui. Feng shui, yeah. Oh, God. The interesting thing about feng shui is how, uh, I remember someone came into an office I was working in once and she said, you're gonna need crystal here above the lavatory to get all the negative chi out of the system. Blah, blah, blah. And she said, this crystal is 25 pounds. And the guy went, we're not gonna spend that. And she went, okay, I got one in for five. Brilliant. It was surprisingly convenient that she had a number of different crystals that apparently did the same job. We're also gonna need a brush to get the shit out of the toilet. What have you got for that? Yeah, there's a lot of that, uh, that twaddle. There was a woman I remember once, I used to do a radio show on the BBC World Service, um, and she came in and she could tell from the coloured liquids that you chose, from a big selection of coloured liquids, she could tell a lot about your personality from that. So uh, I picked up uh, about three or four, and she looked at them and I chose like a blue one, just arbitrary, and she looked at me and she said, okay, I get the sense that you like to communicate with people, but on a global level. <laughs> And you were working for the World I Service. As, as we spoke, we were broadcasting on the World Service. I don't know where, I mean, she just read it from the, the liquids. Um, as a novice, one of the key catchphrases, if you like, of philosophy, and one that's always intrigued and confused me a little, is the famous René Descartes quote, I think, therefore I am. A lot of people think of that as the epitome, in a way, of a philosophical statement. First thing we ever did, I think, mm -hmm. at degree level, and it's the one thing I'd already heard of. It, it's one of those things that, that sort of, uh, uh, filters down, um, cogito ergo sum, as you say, I think, therefore I am, when, um, Descartes was pondering his existence. Um, just before we get to his conclusion, Carl, how do you know this isn't a dream. Uh, just because I haven't been sleeping that well. <laughs> right, no, okay. no, but you could still be dreaming, couldn't you? Because this could be a dream that you haven't been sleeping lately. You could be dreaming the last few nights you haven't been sleeping. Uh, in dreams, the the different like I mean, I, I, like I say, I don't have that many of them because I don't sleep that well. But when I do have one, there's something different and vivid about it. Now, if I was dreaming all this, I reckon my boiler would have been fixed ages ago. <laughs> 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 I don't think anyone has a dream that goes on for that amount of time. Well, it could be a nightmare, but the presumption. But the, I think you're also presuming that that the dream that you could be dreaming needs to be exactly the same as the dreams you think of when you're dreaming. What my point is, there's no way of you knowing that this life you're living now as you talk to us is real, and that it's not actually the imaginings of another Carl somewhere there else. There are actually no clues, Carl. There are actually no clues now that this is the real thing. Well, sometimes, most of the time, it's one minute I'm awake, next minute I'm asleep, then I'm awake again. Yeah. Sleep's just- You know the bit between- you being awake and awake again, that, that's called asleep. Yeah. Now, do you ever think things while you're asleep? Vivid it's, things. It's that bit between the awake and yeah. awake I well, want to look at. You, I told you about one ages ago where- Go on. Where you burst in and I was on the toilet. <laughs> I never heard this dream. Never yeah, yeah, the one that it was all, it was like, like, everyone was German and it was at some gig or something and you opened the door. Mm. And everyone was looking and laughing at me, and I'm sat on the toilet, and you sort of said, oh, that's probably because you're uncomfortable with Fame. being put on the limelight. Yeah, like that you, that you might be, out, yeah, possibly, yeah. But that's one dream See, that I, could or, be true. But <laughs> did you, yeah, exactly! <laughs> or there is a likelihood that you think, I bet he's gonna burst in. I uh, am always uh, on edge when you're about, when I use the toilet here. Yeah. I kind of yeah. think, is he busy at the moment? <laughs> you have to wait till he's on the phone to go for a bit. I have to sit there holding the lock. Yeah. <laughs> It's a weird I mean, it thing isn't to do. normal. It's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> but there's an example of a dream. <sighs> but I think what you're failing to grasp is not so much the mechanics of whether this is a dream, but that you cannot know the truth of what you're experiencing. You cannot know that this is reality. It's a question about reality. So How let's do we go know on what to that then. Is? What what reality is and, and what we like about reality. Robert Nozick did this thing that, that if you could go into a flotation tank and 
you led a whole virtual life and it was the best life possible you did exactly what you've always wanted you became the person you wanted to be you did the best things you could ever dream of doing and you literally couldn't tell the difference so it was your life okay and you lived your biological life out in that tank and died at 80 and had the best life any person could ever have you could pre-program it would you get into that tank knowing what you know now knowing that you would have the best life ever with no heartache no upset no no loved ones dying so what's happening when when i'm sort of having a packet of munchies yeah it, am i having them or are they imaginary they're imaginary but you can't tell the difference it's the best packet of munchies you've ever had i love the fact that you went into the flotation tank Right, uh, and your one proviso was, are munches as good? <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. no, I'm, I'm just taking it back to basics. That is right. basic. You've got yeah. to pre-program your life, that's where you'd start, is it? Munches must always taste magnificent. Well, it's just, if you can still enjoy the basic things in life, then that's yeah. when you can't you do. go wrong. You do. You enjoy them, you are the, you're the, it's the life you'd ever want to live. And yeah, you're living it. That. Bit Sorry? Bit dangerous. Bit dangerous. Why? why? Go on, why? Just, um, I don't know, because sometimes I think things don't happen for the best, right? Right. Sometimes you can sort of think, oh, I'll enjoy that if that happens. And then it doesn't happen, and you've had time to think about ah, what Ah, but this is happened. perfect. No, this is built in. Because whatever happens is for the best. So not only when you're in this flotation tank are you ha enjoying yourself, that things just keep getting better or staying so as you good. Never, you never have a bad day? You never have a bad day. But how long would that last for before you go and fed up with this? Well, why would you get fed up with it? Because you do something else. It's the perfect life. Bear in mind, you don't- you're not aware that you're in the flotation tank. You've made that deal, but then once you're in there, you don't know- you're not aware of being in the flotation tank. You're living your life and it's perfect. You're happy. Well, we don't know how you would be happy. We well, just have munchies every day and- well, that yeah, you'd get in it then. You'd get in it. If you, if you don't know you've got in this tank, if I somehow go to bed at night, someone injects me in the head, and then they go, right, stick him in the tank now, and then I wake up, packet of munchies there, <laughs> sun's out, uh, Suzanne goes, oh, it's a nice day, we'll go and do something nice. Right. Okay, yeah, I meant to be at work. She goes, no, I don't have to go in today. Right. Go, All right, let's yeah. go out then. Now, what's interesting there is that uh, within this scenario, I gave you any any life, you could do anything, and you chose the exact life you've got now, except Suzanne's got a day off. Now, I both love that. Well, I was a bit suspicious, of... though, that she's just taking a day off. No way, it's not happening now. It's not happening, really happening. You could do anything you like, but I like the fact now you're even questioning it, you're not in the tank, and why has Suzanne got a day off, right? <laughs> now, I love that, because that suggests to me that you're a, a nice, happy, satisfied, whatever you want to do it, contented person who's got the perfect life. However, it's almost like you haven't fully understood the possibilities. For example, you wake up, there's the munch, it's a sunny day, Suzanne's not at work, you go, why aren't you at work? No, she goes to you, hold on though, why are you flying? And you go, I just can. But you hadn't even thought that maybe you could fly or swim or hold your breath. You just no, gonna have some munches for oh, breakfast. Hang on a minute, this is day one. Oh, okay. When you go on holiday, yeah. like I said before, you don't you don't turn up and go, right, it's one o'clock, jet ski for half an hour, uh, bungee jump in 40 minutes after that, yeah. let's have a nice roti, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, you know, try a little cocktail. And what do you do? What do you do when you well, arrive you get, there? Well, you get there. Yeah. Uh, the fella takes your case to the room. Right. You have that panic of, am I gonna give him too much money? I don't know right. the currency well enough yet, I don't know how much More information are. than we asked for. Yeah. No. And the most mundane scenario I've ever heard. No, but this is what happens in real life. Yeah. Right, okay. So you have that scenario. You mm. go, right, where's me shorts? You get them on. You go out and have a wander. In the case, you have a wander round <laughs> yeah. to know where everything is. The Car shop. Car park you did the once. The shop, <laughs> uh, you know, how close the beach is. Yeah. Is it busy? Yeah. Okay, you're just telling us what happens when you go on holiday. What's your point? Okay. Because you don't- you don't want fun all in one go. You want to build to it, because mm. that's sometimes part of it. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So anticipation. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that that little bit. Yeah. Uh, it's about things taking time in it, and looking back at the journey and going, yeah. "How did I get here?" Okay. Well, right. Can I ask a question? Because sorry, I'm just uh, what I'm fascinated to know is if you decided to sign up to the the float tank idea. Okay, you can design your perfect life. 
But I prefer not to but know I'm doing it. No, I you won't know. Would, but I you want to ask know. this question. Imagine we, Ricky and I are the doctors, okay? We can put you in this tank. You, all we need to know from you now is what your perfect life is. So we're going to program it in the computer. You're going to wake up tomorrow. You won't know this conversation's happened. You'll have the perfect life. What, if you, if you don't mind, we're going to take notes now. What is the perfect life? You're still obviously living with Suzanne. We've got but munches. What else? We've got, got munches, munches and we've got sunshine. But what else would you like in your magical life of, the, your ultimate life? I think I prefer- Hair? Uh, no, because then I'd know it's not real. No, you, no, you would never know. know. Just, no, no, it just came know. back. Suzanne comes in one day and goes, why aren't you working? She goes, look, I, okay, I've left my job. Can we leave the, why am I at work? I'm always gonna be here, right? I've got a new tonic, right, from Boots. She pops it on your hair, boop, baby gorilla. Yeah, I, d I, d I don't like this idea of suddenly Suzanne's never at work. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just think you need, you need a bit of the badness to have the goodness. Right. <laughs> right. I, in a minute, you're gonna inject it in the head, you're gonna go to sleep, you're gonna be in a flow state, but you are gonna suddenly leave this office and it's gonna be a virtual world. You can do what you want. You can suddenly go, what was I hanging around with that bloke off the office for? I'm a, I'm a spy. You and you go to MI5 it. and they go, oh, thanks for coming in Pilkerton. Um, listen, uh, uh, Drosky, um, he's, he's coming from Russia and, um, he's got the- Bang! What do you do? What's your scenario? What do you do as a job? We've got munches, Suzanne's I'd, I'd never prefer, at work. I prefer what? to leave everything as it is. Brilliant. Go in right. it, go in it, but have everything the same so that I'm going, hang on a minute, has it actually happened? What are you talking about? No, you don't know about this, you don't know anything that's happened. No, because you've just said you're gonna you're gonna put me in the tank and you you asking questions as to what no. I want when I get in it. No, yeah, no, no, but you won't know you're in the tank. Once you're in the tank, you won't know. You'll have a new life, a life that you've designed. Yes, you, you'd have different memories if you wanted. You could be five again, or you could be now, but you did, weren't born no, in Manchester. I prefer it to be the same with the same memories, but the difference is when I next get British gas round, you go, oh, Mr. Wilkinson, yes. <laughs> The so he'd like fixed. to have a virtual life so his boiler's fixed! No, yeah, no, so your no, boiler no, no. still goes wrong you in your dream but, but it you gets fixed. But you don't yes. even need a boiler! You could be the perfect temperature but all the time. But this anymore. I don't, I don't like the idea of too much change. I don't want that much of a change But you won't realise, it won't feel like change. Well it's changed already. You're saying the boiler's been fixed like that. <laughs> I prefer to, to still have that problem go, hang on a minute, <laughs> is this different? Uh, Suzanne's still going to work. Right? That's very important <laughs> too. But then, you, to you don't want her around all day. But then, <laughs> but then, things happen Go that on. wouldn't have happened in this world. Go so on then, right, okay, let's write that. Well, let's see the differences. What do you do? Because I've got to program this. So you, you've got the same job, all that. Are we still around? Uh, yeah, because it's part I'm, of- it's I'm gonna ask you a question now. Thing. Do I still squeeze your head every time I see you, rest you to the ground and wind you up, try and stress you out, call you all hours? Uh, do I still do all that? What am I like? You, you, you're still the same and you still mm. do that, but maybe one day I go, don't do that anymore because it does annoy me. And you go, okay. And then well, I've dealt with it. I've sorted that problem as opposed to this machine, this tank deciding. Right. I don't like the idea of this tank right. making life good for me. Right. I want a few problems and if there's a problem I want to sort it. Okay. But- we well, have hit the nail on the head there. We're going to go back to this because it's fascinating, but knows it concluded that no one would get into the tank because we'd rather have a real life with all its problems than a fake life. And I sort of think you've proved that by even getting into the tank with your provisos and scenarios. I mean, you've changed nothing except your boiler being fixed and me stop squeezing your head but now I'm and again. Which makes me think that you should have your boiler fixed. Mm. And then you will have the perfect life that you can imagine. Yeah, but it's that old chestnut, isn't it? It's the thing of like, um, what's my problem then? You've got right. the problem gene in your head. You've got to fill it with a problem. Yeah, you're not. He's not a geneticist. <laughs> got the problem hole in your head? No, he's got no, the problem uh, hole in your head. Shut up, Ricky. Let him say what he needs got, to he's, say. He's, he's got a problem it. hole in his head. He's got a problem hole in his head. It's called his mouth. Yes. Right. That is your problem hole. So if someone comes up and they go, "I fixed your boiler." Sorry, could I just say, well, ask? No, one, let, let him me, speak. Let for me well, ask one question, Steve. Is the problem hole different from the problem gene, or is that a new term for- you, No, you put things through the problem hole and they end up in the problem gene. You feed something in the problem hole- Is okay. that right, Carl? It goes through the problem yeah. tube into the problem gene. Okay, so it's down the problem conduit. Okay, go on, right. So it's better to have- you've got a problem hole in your head, right? Yeah. So you stuff in a problem problems. into the problem hole. Okay, yeah, goes. okay. Now all the little problems can't get in because of the big problem. 
<laughs> right. right. Is that good or bad? It's but that's not true. The problem ends. hole is a standard size on everyone. <laughs> right. 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 No, but that's Shut not... up, Ricky. Let uh, him now, explain. Now, Ricky, I'd say his problems uh, are not even problems. Well, how big's his problem hole? Same size as mine. Well, same size right, as okay. yours. But his problems are all little ones. They're like, you've got like a, a load of Skittles, I've got a big cream egg. <laughs> Right, but why- Shut I, up! Let but, him but, speak! But, he's but, just but, expanding on his idea, why do you what is his problem? Rushing? What is your problem that's so okay. big compared to my little skittles? What's the problems. You- you get stressed out about things that I'm like, what's up with you? You get annoyed easily with stuff. People chewing loudly. Or someone breathing loudly. Or someone coughing. <laughs> Whereas I'm like, that, that doesn't matter. Like you say, to you, the boiler, he's like, get it ripped out, put a new one in. It's not as easy as that. <laughs> it is! And that's why the problem- Ball is growing. <laughs> it's a bo it's got a gene, a ball, and a hole. So the problem there's ball. No wonder there's no fucking room for a brain. Right, shut up. Let me <laughs> ask. I want to clarify this. The problem ball <laughs> exists in life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It has to go through the problem <laughs> hole, <laughs> down the problem tube, into and the bounce, problem bounce gene. Into the problem gene. Into, right, now then, now then. So you've got the problem ball. Everyone's problem hole is the same size. Okay. But some people's problems are smaller, so they can slip straight into the problem hole. I've got a question, Stephen. Wait, wait. And listen, has anyone got- has anyone got a pair of problem balls? <laughs> or is it always just- Can ladies have a pair of problem balls? <laughs> no, because Hitler had one, uh, problem ball, didn't he? But, uh, c could anyone ever have a pair of problem balls is my question to you. But- and some people's problem balls are much bigger than another man's. Or another woman's, right? Yeah, right. depending on the problem. So you could right. have you could you, you could have a pair of problem balls and one problem hole. The way I'm if saying you went, it, if you, okay, okay, no, no, so, suppose I came to you and said, "Listen, um, well, but a man uh, starving in a foreign country he might no. have huge problem balls. He might have, but if I went to a doctor and said I've got a problem I've, hole, and the doctor said, well, let me see it.'" And I, you know, he said, well, let me see your problem hole. And he, and, and, and hanging down in front of my problem hole was a huge pair of problem balls. What would he treat first, is my question. Well, would he look into the problem hole? He said, right, he'd say, right, take your problem genes off. <laughs> well, right? He, I want to see your problem hole uh, clearly. But he would fish, he would put his hand or his finger into the problem hole to try and remove the problem he ball. He would, wouldn't he? Well, the then, well, he'd, well, he'd, he'd, he could feel the problem balls, but he'd have to insert his finger into the problem hole, wouldn't he? Right. Okay, so, so Carl, go on then. I'll just get in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Okay, so in a roundabout way, back to cogito ergo sum. I think, therefore, I am. Descartes pondering, how do I know this isn't a dream? Well, he concluded he doesn't. When he took it further to, how do I know I even exist, he quite rightly concluded that, well, if I'm even pondering this question, I must exist. Whatever I am, wherever I am, the fact that I'm questioning, introspecting, thinking at all, I think, therefore I am. Because I'm even thinking, at least I know one thing, that I exist. That's all he said, Carl. I don't understand why he had so much time on his hands to be worrying about this. At the what? end of the day, get on with it. You're not doing shit all, Carl! <laughs> so why are you so annoyed at other people who aren't doing anything? I you're just going out in the morning, you're staring at worms, at bugs, you're staring at the sky, you're wondering what has books, a fallen on your head. You're making up, you're making up the books, that isn't researched. What do you mean, making it? What well, is it that you're the, the, doing? One of, the, one of the chapters in your book about travel was Australia. I've never been there myself. Forget it then, throw it away. No, because you can still have You make up on. stuff about a grub eating a biscuit, we're all the same. Well, I mean, what is that? That's not, that's not, br but I laughed. Yeah. So, I, it, so I enjoyed that book. Listen, everyone like me who that bought book that book. That book is absolutely pointless. It is in my lavatory every time I pop in there for a shit. Yeah. Just take it off the shelf, have a little read. Yeah, Great I'm, fun. I, and I'm down to about four pages because <laughs> sometimes I forget to get bog rolled. But listen, that is a fun book to yeah, wipe your ass with. It's a great book to wipe your ass with. But that book was good for me. I don't yeah. know if, if anyone enjoyed it, but I was emptying my worry hole. Is that another is that different to the problem hole, you worry hole? It's next to it. <laughs> Once a problem it. ball is being processed through the the, the hole, <laughs> it, is it dis, dis, is it deposited through the worry oh, hole? I, all I'm saying is you're right, I do watch a lot of insects and stuff. <laughs> and you never see them wasting time. They're <laughs> always doing something and ants carrying something somewhere. Sometimes I watch it and it goes somewhere and comes back again, you think, does it know what it's doing? But <laughs> at least it's trying. <laughs> what do you- Now, if there was a What big... is it doing though? What is that ant doing? 
work it's doing it's building a house but it's, or what what's the point it's everything it does is pointless how can you say that it's pointless i'll tell just... you what if if there was a bigger sort of being looking over the world and they went right let's look at the human race and well they'd look at the ants first and they go right they've got their hands full they're carrying big stuff they try to save time by carrying stuff that's way too big for them really <laughs> they could do that w between three of them but they don't they're all grafting hard then they go right hit the human button they hit the human button they watch the humans the amount of people who are just sat about doing now they're but reading about on. amy winehouse lily allen in london at 2 a.m so what <laughs> what are we doing i agree with you but what are you doing you see the ant analogy joking aside i think there you hit on the fact that life is about working for what you get and i'm right behind that i am right behind that mm. i think that's uh, I, I i think that's absolutely true that's what i meant what's dangerous is a, a boiling cap. kettle to an ant at the end of the day right yeah but that's that's evil isn't it what you know i, I don't i i mean you, you sometimes make out as if i'm an evil man we had an ant problem mm. in the garden suzanne said we've got to get rid of these Mm. And I said, well, it's a bit out of order. They are outside. And mm. she said, yeah, but there's, there's getting a lot of them. Mm. She went and popped the kettle on. Mm. I said, I can't handle this. I went in, right? <laughs> Why you didn't want to see the ant friend? That's sweet. You know, they're there. Yeah, they might be causing a problem, but I don't want to see this, this mess. Now, the thing is, she went out. She poured the hot water on it. I left it a few minutes. I went out. I had a cup of tea. I thought, it's a waste of electrical. Ooh, kills me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I took my cup of tea out there, and I'm sat there. And then, I just saw one come back from wherever it had been. One ant. He looked devastated. <laughs> because that- that had been away. As far as that was concerned, it had been out to get a leaf or whatever. He came back, devastation. <laughs> and it's- it's that what- oh. that, that's- that's the thing that he summed up death for me, that. The, the ants that are dead, they didn't know anything. Suddenly they were there, next minute, load of water, dead. It's the people who are still living in life that are the saddest, aren't they, after yeah. death? And that summed it up. What do you think? That do you, ant would have been better off being there when it happened. How could you tell the ant was- What do you think? So you saw him- it, I mean, they run around in circles anyway, don't they? But this was just kind of going, what's going on? And what did it- did it slow down when it got nearer the nest? Did it drop the leaf and then you see it run the last few inches? It, it just kind of got close and it was like a double take almost. <laughs> Almost like it, it got near the hole, and then it was like, hang on a minute, this can't be it because no one's around. And then it walked on, and it went, no, it is the hole. And it went back, and it, it just sort of stopped for a minute. Ah. Oh. And that, that for me, that's the sort of thoughts Descartes should have been having. What? Things that you can look at as a human uh, yeah. and appreciate it and understand it yeah. and go, yeah, that's true, that is like life. Instead of, oh, am I awake? Am I asleep or what? Nah. Well, you might as well be asleep because you're doing nothing else. <laughs> Oh, Descartes, Winehouse, Allen, slammed. What do you do towards enjoying your life? I don't normally enjoy the thing when I'm doing it, it's after. It's like that holiday, when I what was on holiday. What do you mean, holiday. you don't enjoy the thing when you're doing it, it's after? What's an example of not enjoying the thing at the moment, but you do after? You didn't enjoy the holiday. Say but like you, the holiday, I've just so been you enjoy coming off holiday. What? Let, I wanna hear it, you, you enjoy the holiday, you didn't enjoy the when holiday. When I'm there, I had fleas biting me. Yeah. I had mosquitoes biting me. Yeah. Uh, there was a funny smell of damp in the bathroom. I was worrying, getting in the sea, thinking, is there stonefish in it? <laughs> right? Now you've yeah. got all that going on. Yeah. When you get back, you forget about the damp smell. You forget well, about you the fleas, because the bites have gone. They're not as much of a problem. Yeah. So then your brain starts going, well, hang on, what did I enjoy? And you go, I enjoyed the Dorada fish I had that I've never eaten. Yeah. That's an experience. At the time, I wasn't enjoying it because I'm thinking, when I get back, I'm going to have fleas on me again. Yeah. So you remember all the good stuff. It's like an old person when they're dying and they go, I'm having flashbacks. They don't say, I I'm remembering the time my shoes were too tight. What they do they say, say? They're having nice, they're going, oh, I love the time with that. I was old. wearing flip flops. No, they, they oh. enjoy, they have flashbacks. Like what, nice what, 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 what do you think you're going back? The and that, you'll go, oh, the, 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 the lovely hot summer of 79. So you don't enjoy anything you enjoy while you're at doing the moment, it? At the moment, at the moment in time, it's I don't understand afterwards. that. That's, that, I mean, that is the oddest thing I've ever heard about. I think about. there's actually a medical term for it, there's someone who's unable well, to, to, to enjoy, to have, to receive pleasure, to take pleasure. It's really weird, that, that is really weird. No, because you're busy doing the thing. So well, you haven't so, got time to enjoy so it. So you, you can't enjoy something you're busy doing, because you're busy doing it, you can't possibly enjoy it. 
Or you don't know if you're go gonna enjoy it because it hasn't finished yet. Well, Carl, but listen, I know from the, v right, the moment- Right, say this. But listen, Bungie I- jumping. I'd love right. to bet I do it. I bet you get a, a brilliant feeling as right. you're falling. Yeah. But I wouldn't be enjoying it because I'd be going, is the thing gonna snap? Right, okay. Well, there's, there's, there, no, there, that is, there is something about that. Extreme sports, there is a reason, uh, why you're doing it. It is the after effect you enjoy because right. it's the fear and then the, right. the, the endorphins that rush to you and you go, my oh god, I survived, isn't it brilliant? That's right. a feeling of euphoria. So that's- No, but, you're but, having a nice dinner. Right, okay. Now, when I get a menu given to me in a restaurant- Yeah. I go, right, what am I gonna do here? Yeah. Right, well, when I came here, I thought I'd have some lamb chops. They've got lamb chops, great. Wonder how much to give you, because I quite fancy this pudding they've got. Right. Now, I have the lamb chops, it comes with extra veg. <laughs> I eat it, I enjoy it. The pudding I wanted, it's gone out the window, I've got no room for it now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you enjoyed the lamb chops. But you enjoyed the lamb chops, you enjoyed- you can only so- get packed so much enjoy- if you're enjoying all- all your life all the time, there's no point in regretting anything. That's just greed. No, but I was looking forward to the pudding. Well, you shouldn't have eaten all the veg. Yeah, but I was enjoying it at that point. But then you take the pleasure that you had at that point. No, because yeah. I wanted a pudding. Yeah, but you- But you didn't want a pudding or you've had a pudding. No, because I would have had it for the sake of having it. Yeah, and but, then it's- it's- Yeah, but what's- it. I don't know what the whinge is there. You had a lovely meal, you had some lovely lamb chops, you enjoyed the hour- Because when I read that they had a-, a like, profiteroles on there, yeah. I thought I fancy a couple of them. Yeah, and, and then- it, And the chance has gone, I'm probably not coming back to this- this restaurant Yeah, now, but you haven't missed a chance, you had the chance, you didn't want to take it because you were full up with lovely lamb. It's What's not like problem? you didn't enjoy the lamb and the veg. If you'd not enjoyed that, I can understand your point. But you had a lovely time eating the lamb and the veg. If someone the gravy? If, if the bloke came here and said, you can have the profit rolls if you eat this lamb you don't like, you go, oh. And you ate the lamb, you didn't like it, but now you're full, then you could whinge. You wish I hadn't been forced to eat the lamb, I could have the little profit rolls. That's, you know. I had a spicy sausage. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, the, th the problem was, <laughs> I was on. enjoying it, but I thought this is this is the spiciest sausage I've ever eaten. Right. <laughs> now, I could only enjoy that <laughs> the next day, night, when I knew that it's Literally. gone through my body, there hasn't been a problem. So I go, that was a nice sausage, I'd have one of them again. Right. <laughs> that was a nice sausage! <laughs> but then the next time, surely you'd be enjoying it, because you wouldn't have the trauma of the next night, because you'd live through it, and now you're just enjoying the, the lovely problem... spiciness and the sausageness of the spicy sausage. Yeah, but the problem is, once you've enjoyed something, it's very difficult to replace what you got from that spicy sausage the first time. Then why are you looking forward to having another one? Because let me tell you. Go on. Auntie Nora. Yeah. She's- she's guilty of this all the time. She right. loves a, a spicy sausage. Well she- sausage, she, yeah. you know, I've told you she prepares all her food, mm. right? She's got them all in bags in a freezer, Monday, mm. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Yeah. Right. Um, she's got it all there. Now, she- what she normally does, she makes a big pot of curry. Mm -hmm. Right. She goes, what I'll do, I'll pop that in the Monday bag and I'll pop it in the Thursday bag. Mm. It's the same curry. Now she has it on the Monday. Yeah. She loves it. She right. thinks I got the mix just right there, the spices yeah. are good, the yeah. chicken was tasty. I'm looking forward to Thursday. I'm looking forward to Thursday, I can't wait for Thursday. Yeah. Right. I'll call her up on the Thursday evening, I'll go, how was the curry that you had on Monday that you said you were having again on Thursday that you enjoyed? Didn't enjoy it. Mm. Why is that? Dunno, just want the same. Now the weird thing there is, it is the same. Right. And in order, that is the same, it's from the same bag, it's from the same pot, but yeah. she was expecting too much. And that's the problem. If I had that mm. spicy sausage again, yeah. he's never gonna live up to it. So forget the spicy sausage. I've had it, I've experienced it. So you never know. Someone says, one. well, it depends. So do you have anything twice, ever? Maybe Jesus. not. But this is insane, Carl, because this aside from you and your Auntie Norma and presumably all the other Pilkington clan, or are all as weird as one another, why you phone her up and ask her what she's having for tea, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing. What, and that that shows not you only that what, it's that actually on Monday, yeah. what are you going to do on Thursday as well? Make, I'll make a note of it in the Auntie Norma's <laughs> <a> food diary. <laughs> that's proof that you really aren't enjoying your life <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> to go, right, oh, fucking hell, what else gonna... you say But then he's people. phoning her up again late on the Friday to find out how the Thursday curry went down. I know, exactly. Yeah. That's two calls, that week. Well, it's just Just read her journal. No, he makes her happy, doesn't it, a call. She's got nothing else. Yeah, but the curry doesn't. The, the curry doesn't make her happy. No, well, she did the first they time. They loved it on Monday, we should like it on Thursday. Now the question is, is it better to enjoy something once and not again than not at all? But you're an what idiot because you you're the only person who experiences this. That's not the choice. Th that's not the choice for normal people. You can either never enjoy summer or only enjoy it once. You can enjoy things loads of times. No, you can't. That's what a hobby is. A hobby is enjoying things over and over again. I haven't got a hobby ever. That's why. I've had loads of hobbies in the past. I did the dancing, I did the boxing, I did, uh, what else have I done? Mm, that is it, I think that's what but, but, but that's what I'm saying though, I soon get bored. And that's, it's like how you enjoy, you know, I love munchies. Yeah. But I always enjoy 
the last one more than- Well that doesn't make sense, that goes c totally counter to your argument. No, cause it's from one packet. What? It's from one packet. What difference does that make? The so first you, one's surely so your favourite. No, so hold on. on, so if you'd have one munchie- I'll go out as a munchie, mate. You'd no. go, I'm not gonna take one unless I can have all of them, in, uh, particularly the last one. Um, but what is- Well no, I'd like to have them all, please. What? No, no, you can't have them all. Don't be so greedy. Have, have one munchie. Have the first munchie. There but you I'm go. I'm going to have one, and then I'm going to get a taste for them, and I, I'll probably want another. Well, no, that, they're my munchies, aren't they? No, I'll keep them then. Forget it. Well, look, so you'd rather have no munchies than one munchie? I'll go and buy a packet. I prefer. I prefer to go. Do you know what? I fancy a packet of them. But why do you enjoy <laughs> okay, the last? Okay, why wait. do you enjoy the last munchie more than the first? Whereas you, know you enjoy the, the first one. curry, but not the but second. But you know, curry. it's the last one because it's no, because I'm eating them all in one sitting. I'm not going. That's for Monday. That's for Tuesday. That's for Wednesday. I'm right. talking about a packet of munchies. Right. I eat them. There's probably about twelve in a packet. Okay. I shove the first four in without even thinking what I'm eating. Really <laughs> <best>. <laughs> you shove the first four in without right. even thinking about what right. I'm yeah. eating. Now, th then, when you're getting towards the end, you make them last more, you might bite the top of them. You look what's inside them, you go, oh, I'm liking this. But you know, I'm not, what, one? every time? What, every time you buy a packet of munchies? Yeah. 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 So, hold on though, you must enjoy a packet of munchies regularly then? Not as often as you think. The well, I don't know. <laughs> well, <laughs> no as I think, I don't know. So tell me how often you enjoy a packet of munchies. Normally after a sort of, maybe once a month. So, every month, you look forward to a lovely packet of munchies. And the same experience. Yeah, you but like at the, the first end, one. I like the last one. The only thing you know you enjoy, look forward to enjoy, and it fulfills all those expectations is a fucking packet of munchies once a month. Fuck me. What do you think happiness is? Um, again, you, you only know the happiness because of the badness. You've well, got to have a yin and a yang. Well, I know what you mean there. I, I, I agree with you on this because. It, it's sort of no good to be handed it on a plate. I mean, just tr just from my own experience, working for someone does feel better because you've got a you've got a pride and a satisfaction. I genuinely think it's better to start a business, struggle, go bust, come back, than win the lottery. Yeah, I genuinely believe that. And the older I get, the the, the more sure I am of that. That working hard is itself the reward, and I genuinely believe that. But where does it end? There's, it's no point having the struggle till you die and never get any happiness. Um, so w what's your balance? We don't have to go into philosophical terms here. What's your balance? What's your yin and yang of a, of a, of a good life? Uh, and, and by right, good life yeah. I mean one that you've enjoyed or, or, or been satisfied with and one that you have no regrets or guilt or shame and a bit of pride. What are you asking me? I've, uh, yeah, I've got a bit of all that. Right. But you need you need the mixture, don't you? So you so you find out what you what your favourite thing is. It's like a bag of revels. Yeah, but you can't you can't cherish guilt or shame. Did you just say you? life is like a bag of revels? Isn't that dangerously close to life's like a box of chocolates? In Forrest Gump over there, yeah. Jesus. No, but it, but it is, isn't it? There's there's one or two in there that I don't like. Like what? The raisin. Raisin no, 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 no. With chocolate. Yeah, no, no. Now what Me I'm saying metaphorically, is metaphorically, what, what's the? Like, yeah, well, I'm, I'm actually using... named what Revel he doesn't like. Yeah, well, I'm telling you because it works in life. Go on then. But the Revel, you like raisins? There, go on. Well, well, maybe if you have what? enough raisin ones, yeah, you eventually go. Do you know what? They're not that bad. What? And that's the thing in life. Well, hold on, wait a minute. So what are you saying? Where's this metaphor? Are you saying suddenly all the bad things in life are pretty good actually if you just well, get used to them? Sometimes, sometimes out of bad comes some good. Go on. At the end of the day. The, uh, the revel mm. thing. What happened to the munchie here? Oh, uh, well again, with life, if you have too much munchies, you get sick of the munchies. So move on, mix it up. What, what mixes it up? Bag of rebels. You've got a bit of everything in there. <laughs> right. So even the ones you don't like, you might like in the end, you'll go, do you know what? I was okay, wrong, lose, I was lose the analogy you. now. It actually just talking about rebels now, <laughs> in life. <laughs> what about, what about, um, oh, what can I, what has he enjoyed before? What would you have written to Jim will fix it to fix for you? What would have given you pleasure as a kid? Dear Jim, can you fix it for me to do what? Uh, when I watched Jim will fix it as a kid, they never really lived up to what the kid wanted. 
Did they? But what would you have requested? But I don't think I would because I think I saw how disappointed most of the oh, kids were. Oh God! It's a kid exhausting. like whistling. They brought out this Roger Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because they look at it. And they go, "Can you fix it for me to go into space?" No. Can I dance with Banana Rama? No problem. That's the ones they pick. Yeah. So that's I mean? why I wouldn't write in because. Whatever you ask for, you're always gonna get a watered down version. But if Jim could fix it for you to do anything, what would you have chosen? There's not many things I wanted as a kid. One thing. Jesus just Christ. one thing. To choose one thing, please. That my name was Brett. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking hell! It's not unbelievable! <laughs> I mean, it's extraordinary. <laughs> there, is no, there is no predicting that. <laughs> okay, you know what? I can make that dream come yeah, true for you I mean, right now, Brett. We can just call you Brett from now on. Not a problem, Brett. Brett Pilkington. It sounds good. I love the fact that it's the Carl bit he wants to replace, not the fucking no, but Pilkington. No, that, that doesn't work either, because like, then- well, I told, not, Because I told okay. me- I told me mum and dad that that's what I wanted. They started calling me that, but then I forgot they, that- They- what? They went along with it? Yeah. So you said, mum, dad, call me Brett from now on, and they went, all right. Yeah, but then I, I kept forgetting that I was Brett, so I wasn't answering, so they went back to Carl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> it's amazing! So you've had that dream come true. Yeah, and it wasn't that good. And that's what I'm saying to you. Things never live up to what you want. Dreams, what are they? <laughs> <laughs> Taking one of the big themes of philosophy further, um, why are we here, what's the point of life, what is it to be human, um, the ethical upshots of some of the technological and medical breakthroughs pose, you know, more of their own questions. Cloning, uh, is that, is that a person in its own right? Well, of course it is. Um, what about if you grow that for, for harvesting without the brain? Um, so, so growing kind of or uh, vital organs yeah. presumably in a, in a laboratory. What about that, you know, uh, stem cell research? Is that, you know? I mean, there's, there's, there's weird things happening all the time with all this transplant stuff. Um, read about one who, uh, you know, a way of sort of, you're saying, oh, it's just a bit of meat. Yeah. You're saying, no, it doesn't No, matter. what I meant, it, 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 organs can't have rights and feelings. No, but listen that. to this. Go on. So. It's gonna be bullshit. No. <laughs> no, no, my, my, no, the, the, the you, 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 would you like a small beep, wager? Beep, 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 beep. The census went up when he said, right, listen to this. Okay, right. I'm gonna bet you five pounds, Rick, that this is not bullshit. Don't let me down, Carl. Okay, I'm gonna bet you, um, they found out it was the heart of a chimp and the bloke selling like bananas. <laughs> okay. Uh, and the doc- the doctor bought it half price at a market. I've got faith in Carl. I don't think he's gonna let me down here. Not when we're talking about philosophy. He's gonna have done some careful research. Okay. Let's take a wager. Five pounds is coming my way. So, what happened is, do you know how, like, people do, uh, donor cards? Mm-hmm. So one filled one out saying, if I die, um, he can have my kidney, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, he died. He said, get the kidney out. So he got the kidney out of him. Um, someone who needed a new kidney, they were like over the moon, there's a new kidney on the way. Um, but this person who didn't, didn't, who needed the new kidney had a couple of things. What? He, he wasn't very good at driving. Yeah. And he couldn't stand yellow biscuits. Right. Couldn't stand yellow biscuits. Okay. He just didn't like them. There okay. was something, he didn't know why, he just okay. never liked them. Anyway, they pop it in, he's having his tests done, he's in hospital for a couple of days, Goes home, goes, could do with a yellow biscuit. What the fuck's a yellow biscuit? Just a- Banana baldies. What are you talking about? Just a yellow biscuit. Who, who decides, I, I like all biscuits except yellow ones. Where is this, uh, uh, I'm just a telling you what happened. Right, and, and well, I don't know why, I, I don't know what the colour of the biscuit's got necessarily got to do with it. It's like a phobia. It's right. an odd phobia. Oh, so he fears the combination of yellowness and biscuitiness. Right, so a bloke- he doesn't mind biscuits, I don't mind yellow. Don't ever put them together, that's my worst nightmare! <laughs> <laughs> so, right, I'm confused as to who's got what, who's, okay. who's kidney. There's a bloke, a bloke's received a new kidney. He hated biscuits He's not very good at driving, he hates custard creams. Right, but now, suddenly, <laughs> after the hospital transport, the, uh, after the operation, <laughs> mm, 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 oh, mm, mm, a really cream. fancy, Yellow biscuit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Does he go out for a drive at any point? He went driving. He right. Cause he's going to be terrible. He loved driving all over the road. What? No, oh, what? Oh, what? He loved driving. He liked driving all of a sudden. What? But he hated it. I know. But this is what's weird. It's bollocks. 
the kidney is a filter system. But, if you have something for long It's enough, like getting a new tea strainer and suddenly liking your biscuits and driving. No. The kidney has no impact on anything. No. It's like how if you knock about with someone, you pick up their little things that they do. Right. Suzanne kept saying to me, that's a nonsense. I said, stop saying that. You've suddenly picked that up from someone. I said, you've never said that before. And you've done <laughs> it three times in about two days. <laughs> And it's the same thing, it's Jesus the same Christ. thing. Living with Carl. <laughs> he doesn't like me saying nonsense. I don't know why. <laughs> but things. let's be honest, if you're gonna live with Carl, you're gonna use the phrase, yeah. that's nonsense. You're gonna start coming lot. up with more and more bollocks, nonsense, <laughs> rubbish, <laughs> shit. Round-headed fool, you've picked that from someone, St you've used that two hundred times in the last three minutes. Head like a fucking orange. Stupid fucking bald cunt, where'd you get that from, Suzanne? You've said it three times just during fucking breakfast. Fucking hell, dim-witted half- <laughs> Steve, five quid. Yep. A big question, particularly in the the area of um, philosophy of the mind, is what is intelligence? It's just it, it, it's what you know, isn't it? Well, that's knowledge, isn't it? Really? Yeah, it's a it's a form of knowledge. Intelligence? No, I don't think it is. Why not? Because intelligence, really, is everything from the ability to retain knowledge, to understand it, to apply. It's probably a little bit like the difference between how fast the computer is and how good the program on that computer is. It's no good. I'd say I've got a brain mm. that, that can, it can work stuff out, mm. um, but sometimes if, if I tell it too much, he can't remember all of it. Now, if I had a brain that had loads of memory space, yeah, tell me as much as you want. Well, that that's important. That's and important. You keep to it. But yeah, but that some people would say that's what intelligence is, isn't it? Memory. It's no good saying he's he's brilliant. He learns ten thousand facts a day. Really? Yeah, he forgets them the next day. Yeah. Well, right. that's what I'm saying. Well, yeah, but but what good is that? Trivia is nothing. To, uh, it no, doesn't show good, intelligence. It's, good, it's it doesn't... good for chat. It's good for chat, and it when you're out and about, if you meet a stranger, mm. it's good to drop something in, like you know. Go on. Uh, what would you drop in to show you're intelligent? Well, just to, just to meet you. Just met me at the bus stop. You think he's a nice fella? Steve, Steve's at the bus stop. There he is. He's there. He's got his he's got his little duffel coat on. His little scarf. His file. He's, he's got his little glasses yeah. there, a little bit muddied up where some, some ruffians are like thrown mud at him and, he, and I've seen this and he's, he's cried and he's shat himself. Well that's not true. Yeah, and he's run to the bus true. stop to go home to his mum. That's okay? not true at all. So at the bus stop, there he is, you come along, you go, oh who's this nerd who shat himself? <laughs> that right? would never happen. Right, would never right? happen. And you, you I just fought though, I never had a fight with him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you go, okay, he's obviously intellectual, look at him. And he's gone, and he's looked at you and he's gone, Jesus Christ, you look thick. Mm -hmm. Prove him wrong. No, what I'd do- I, Go on. There's no point just having one fact. Right. I'd wait for him to start a topic, and I'd show my intelligence by having a fact on the topic he's brought up. Okay. Because we can all have one topic- Yeah. That you go, uh, oh, I'll show this off, and then, you know, someone goes, oh, has he been talking to you about the peanut fact again? And yeah. you know, he's obviously telling everyone, then it's just sure. a boring answer. Okay, so I might just say to you, you know, what are your views on mathematics? I just say the thing with numbers is there's, there's there's loads of them. I remember I told you an interesting fact once again to try and explain um, infinity to you, and I told you this: there are as many even numbers as even and odd numbers put together. Yeah. What do you think of that? It's I, I think I've said before that I don't think things like that are impressive because numbers are man-made anyway. Right. If you were talking about, like, when you mentioned about, um, uh, mm. there's, there's more insects we don't know about than what we do, right. then you're going, oh, where are they? <laughs> where are they hiding? It okay. leaves a question. The well. fact that there's loads of numbers, it's like, yeah, but at the same time, you could, you could rule numbers out of your life if you wanted to. Really? You could live a life- Do you really think that? Difficult. Yeah, you could. There's, there's tribes. There's tribes in the Amazon. Yeah, but they're not they getting their food from Sainsbury's, are no, they? No, they, they, they count they, to three. They don't need any more numbers than three. And they just have three because they go, uh, one, they know what one is, they go, let, pass us one of them. And <laughs> they have one of them. What do you mean? Anything what over, you say, anything over three, yeah. they just say, well, you're being greedy. <laughs> so they don't need it. But what if they've got five not. children? How many kids you've got when you're living in a place like that, mm. it doesn't matter. Mm. 
It's not about you're just part of the tribe. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. Right, where is this tribe that only counts to three? It's somewhere like the Amazon or something. Really? And they, they, there's no more numbers than three. They mm. don't need it. Anything more than three, they just say, I'll have more. Right. Or give us another three. But give they us another three? To, well, yeah. Yeah. Or another one, or another two. But what if they need two hundred? That's complicated, isn't it? Well, you just keep going, give us three, and then just keep That's a slow three. way of doing it. They've got nothing else to do, they're living in the Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm at the bus stop, um... Oh, here's your bus. <laughs> <laughs> so far, you've told me nothing about maths whatsoever. So you're concluding that he is dim. Fucking idiot. When I was on holiday recently. Yeah. I got talking to an old fella, because mm. where, where I went, it's mainly for old people. Mm -hmm. Um, I got chatting with him. Uh, you could tell he had a lot of money. Yeah. He sort of tanned. He had, um, that sort of, um, rouge-coloured sort of jeans. Oh, yeah. Which is always sort tell, of- Tell, tell, sign. It's, it's kind of like he's got money. Yeah. And, um- The, uh, red jeans are twice as much there. It's okay, I've got money. Yeah, it's sort of- it's either that colour or yellow. But you yeah. can carry it off when you're an old man, and especially with the tan, you think, yeah, he's got a few. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a millionaire. Do you have any yellow jeans? Uh, we've got one pair, sir, but they're the most expensive. Yeah, they're, they're in the back room. Um, uh, could I just see your your bank account first? There is. Oh, yeah, you can afford yellow jeans, right, sir? Come this way. So I got talking to him, and it turns out he had a uh, cruise ship. Right. Loads of money. Mm. Now I was chatting to him for about. Ten minutes. Yeah. What so colour was his jacket? Said very, he didn't have a jacket on, just a white shirt. Mm. He's wearing red jeans and a white shirt. Yeah, sort of leather, leather slip-on shoes that I can remember. And um, how old is he? It's hard to tell because he, he was well tanned. Right. Um, was he an attractive man? He's a good-looking fella. Um, so he's rich. So you saw this rich, good-looking bloke with just a shirt on. Oh, he had a shirt and his his pink yeah. pants. It's picked so, pants, and you okay. just went over what? and struck up a conversation. I don't know. Why did you notice his, what um, colour kind of the crotch area was? What? Why did you notice what you were looking for at the eyes? I, I can see why you could see you, if you're looking at his face, you could see a white shirt. But why could you see you what colour the you. fabric around his this testicles were? You saw you. a good-looking old man sat at the bar. You went up and bought him a drink. Right? Yeah, you, oh, so, I was you noticed for the barbecue to open. Right. right? Okay, and you I got noticed the man. So you noticed the man's trousers. No. Yeah. No. I was annoyed. I don't like late nights on holiday. Okay. Jet lag. Suzanne said, let's go down there early tonight. Right. I get there, I find out the barbecue's not for another forty odd minutes. What time was the it? The holiday rep. Uh, well, I don't know, it starts at eight. Well, so you're noticing people, you're minutes. noticing old men's, uh, genital coverings, but you don't know what fucking time it is. Yeah, but- Get what your I'm story saying, straight. What I'm saying to you is, the right. reason I noticed his pants is because what he was talking about- right. There was no reference points, I didn't have a clue what he was going on about. Right. You what was he talking about for your eyes to wander down to his penis, is what I'm trying to say. What made you look at his penis? Because I got bored. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. What I'm trying to say to you is, <coughs> his, his reference points, I had no idea and what, what he was, was he going talking on about. about. He was talking about how he was in some Cuban war, he told me about how he'd met President Reagan, he told me something about how he'd, he'd cut up a cow once, there was, uh, <laughs> and so, and <laughs> this, this bloke, <laughs> I, I think he's an maniac it's, it's fucking who Dexter. has blood on his trousers <laughs> yeah. whilst hacking up his dead wife, he's gone insane, he's jithering and chatting away, claiming he owns a cruise ship. He, he told me he spent 36 grand on furniture. And when I sort of looked at him like, what have you been buying? And he's going, oh well I needed a couple of shade lunges. And it, it was just, there was nothing I could relate to. <laughs> he lunges! He had nothing. <laughs> wasn't, wasn't she in a TV series? I don't understand why you have no interest in either being in a Cuban war, having met Ronald Reagan, because why is that not interest? Why have because you got I no didn't reference? Know I don't know why the trousers would be uh, much more appealing to you. If someone was telling me- I, you, I was in a and war, then I met I Che Guevara uh, and Fidel yeah, Castro. Fidel Castro, and then why are you looking at my packet? So that's, that's my point, it's just What's that, your point? That you can have a chat with a fella, just like I'm talking to the geek at the bus stop. <laughs> <laughs> And even sometimes, 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 you can't, you can't take part. 
what, what am I meant to say about him meeting Reagan? What am I meant to say about him being Why aren't you just to ask him, ask him questions about he was in a war? When I sort of took it back to, oh, I wonder what, what meat they're doing at the barbecue, <laughs> he wasn't bothered. <laughs> yeah. He loved the fact that that's your contribution. He's talking about the missile crisis and you're going, oh. He's met one. presidents and yeah. important people. He's experienced extraordinary you things, see, which would be fascinating to anyone and you're not interested. You just want to know whether the sausages. But, but I mean, there, there it is, you see. He's come down, he's looked at you without prejudice and thought, I don't know this guy. The language barrier probably saved you. And he thought he's probably a smart guy. I'd tell him a bit of my, li of my life. He why is he looking at my meat? Why is he looking at my meat and two veg? You know, like the barbecue, you don't need the barbecue, it's a lovely little fucking sausage here. When but you're talking to a stranger, mm. aren't you meant to keep it- Above the waist. Keep it, uh- Looking at his bollocks. Keep it Erect. <laughs> I made Carl laugh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, the in-depth study of the mother of science, the Ricky Gervais Guide to Philosophy. You can still enjoy the back catalogue of these guides, medicine, natural history and the arts, and seasons one to five of the Ricky Gervais Show. Over the last few years, with all our explorations, our studies, what have you learnt? What's the one big thing you've learnt since we've been doing this, since you've met myself and, and Stephen, since we've been prodding you, since we've treated you like, like an ape that we want to teach to speak? What have you learnt about yourself and the world? One thing, if you had to take it with you. I don't know, I don't, I don't think I've learned anything that, that substantial. Ever? During all this. There's not been anything groundbreaking, has there? We've chatted about midgets with no arms and legs. Gay ones. <laughs> I don't know if that will ever crop up again in a chat. So even if, even if I've learned something from it, I don't think it'll ever crop up again. <laughs> so it's no use. That's what I'm saying to you about information and intelligence. It's if you can use it. There's so no you're saying this series of audiobooks at the price of one pound ninety five is absolutely worthless and pointless. Yeah, I suppose it is, yeah. Thanks. Good night.